you as a person, you felt like you outgrew Memphis, and by moving the ATL, you found a second wave of success. Is that a formula that you think works for you, or should Fraser Boy or Project Pat or Little White should they have done the same thing so they could have lent their talent to a bigger crowd, or that's what just worked for you? So many people get caught up in what people think, and I've never been there. I don't give a fuck what you think. I know where I'm born. I know where I'm bred. I know where I'm raised, and I throw up an M on every fucking picture and every place I go. So I rep Memphis till I'm fucking gone. And the, and the city know that. And as far as giving back community efforts, philanthropists, and, and just so many educational events that we've done for the city to enlighten and enhance and upgrade. And you know what I mean? Like, bro, it's, I, I, I'd have exhausted all of my energy into my city of Memphis all the time. And I it, that will never stop. You know what I mean? Regardless of where I'm at. If I see a city and I can play major league base, basketball here, and if I feel like I'm playing underground basketball in Memphis, I'm finna go play with the major leagues, my nigga. And as soon as I got to Atlanta, bam, Jeezy, Gucci, Pastor Troy, Rick Ross, Birdman, Boys in the Hood, Drake, Two Chains. Like, come on, how it's like? Okay, it was a, a good hundred people to work with in Memphis. Guess what? It was about ten thousand motherfuckers to work with in Atlanta. So I'm going to make more money. And, and, you know, me, I'm a businessman. You know what I'm saying? I got to go with the major shit going on it. And then we still pipeline that shit. That's the difference between me because I'm getting money in Atlanta, but I'm pipelining that shit back to Memphis. You know what I'm saying? So a lot of when, when Dolph needed me, Ken Folk Thugs was calling me. You know what I'm saying? That's the first folk who told me about Dolph. Ken Folk Thugs. Hey, man, I'm telling you, man, Dolph, the next nigga. Hey, shit, let's get it. We give them the blueprint, tell them what to do. Woo, woo, woo. This live mixtape thing popping. Woo, woo, woo. We come with Welcome to Dolph World. High class street music, volume one, volume two, volume three, volume four, nigga, gelato, motherfucking bosses and shooters. Did man, every rapper, I tell rappers all the time, man, drop 30 motherfucking tapes and see where you at after 30 tapes. Motherfuckers be happy about one tape, two tape, three tape. Oh, that's cool. That's some RB shit. You wanna be this rap shit, you wanna do some rap shit, man. You're gonna have to be about uh 30 to 100 tapes deep. Period. I watched Dolph go from 40 grand to fucking almost 40 million. So, you know what I'm saying? Like, the, the same thing with Moneybag, yo. Same thing with Gotti. You know what I'm saying? Black boy, youngster. I mean, uh, black, uh, uh, young, black, uh, youngster. You know what I'm saying? Just watching it, seeing it, even with two chains. Watching it, seeing it, even with Jeezy, even with Tip. I've seen it from the bottom. Go to the top. Time, 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 time again. Okay, we got a new artist, Drake. From the bottom. I seen it. His first music ever we did was, was Money to Blow. You know what I'm saying? Like, I seen it. Even 2 chains, like Switch. Hey, man, the titty boy thing, man. Woo, 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 man. I just feel like, man, you know what I mean? I, you know, DTP ain't doing all they can for me. Woo, woo, woo. The, like, you know what I'm saying? The frustration, the vibe. Okay, the name change. All right, bet. Let's do true religion. I do walk in and I turn up, round round I'm getting it, and boo. Boo and round round I'm getting it, both hit the top 100 billboard. Yeah, I, I think a lot of people, they get into their feelings about it, but look here, Juicy J wouldn't have gotten on a Katy Perry record if he would have stayed where he was. Man, facts. 